exploring nature, wild camping, bushcraft. So, evolve your cycling is my message for the video. Right, another little a little adventure out into the up into the hills, but with a mountain bike this time. Um, yeah, so it's going to be a really hot day today, and I really can't deal with anything over 25 degrees. I just don't bother cycling. It's going to be about 27, 28 today here. So I'm going to just going to be, go up into the into the woods. It's only about a 30 mile loop, but um, I can see my mum officially on Monday. But I'm going to go see her really now into her garden um, so through the through the woods up into the hills back down to my mum's uh, probably have a cup of tea down there got my lunch um, in the back um, and then cycle back to here uh, quite a lot of planning to get these sorts of trips sorted so it's about an hour to sort out my route um, and that's with some local knowledge as well so it's quite a lot of work to put into uh, these sort of trips if you're going to do them um, but I think they're really worth it just because there's something different um, and I really can't be doing with spending five six hours riding in this heat today I go downhill quite quickly uh, unless I'm really rigid with water and everything else so I can't be bothered I'm just going to do this 30 miles off-road um, just as something a little bit different Because of the heat, just getting into the shade, getting my temperature down. Most of this is in the woods. Um, but you, like I say, you've got to do a lot of planning um, to get a decent route. And it's really quiet out here. I think most people are down on the beach at the, at the moment now. The lockdown has not officially ended, but they've basically given people a lot more freedoms, um, which people are already taking. I saw it the, yesterday, went down to the beach. Very quiet beach, not a lot of people there, but then a load of teenagers arrived, probably about 30 of them with beers, a little fire on one end of the beach. So they were keeping, you know, they were being quite reasonable, but there was no social distancing going on whatsoever. But uh, it's really quiet up here. Um, yeah, I've had a faff already. Left this rucksack, which has got my water in it, importantly, some food and cameras and so on. I left that at home, so. Had an hour's round trip to go and reco recover that, like a fool. Hey, you've got to be careful with ticks at the moment in long grass. My missus had a little, she thought it was just a scab, and she was kind of flappy. So uh, I got the magnifying glass and had a look. I can see these little hairs almost coming off it. I assumed it was a tick, pulled it off. Sure enough, put it on, filmed it with a camera, zoomed it in. Horrible little thing. <laughs> In fact, I might put a clip of it up. Those are hammock spots. <sighs> Blimey, this hurts. Yeah, there are loads of places like this in the UK where you can go and explore on a bike. And, and this isn't mountain bike stuff. You know, this is a, a gravel bike is perfect gravel bike country but uh, there are, so I know there are some rough bits which I want to try just to see what they're like so I thought I'd bring my, this one out although my seat is slipping forward tilting forward for some reason but um, less populated here but really, the really the best way to do this sort of exploring around your local area is to use uh, a planning tool and a GPS head unit um, yeah, so ride with GPS is the best 
that I know stop here. Ride with GPS is the best that I know. Oh, great little, and this is ideal for kids who just want to go and explore and hunt around. So I'm really keen to take my, my youngest out to do a little bit of wild camping, but it's got to be somewhere that's reasonably easy to walk through. Um, it's secluded, it's relatively safe. So I'm just going to do a little, a few reckies over the next few weeks to work out the best, best spot and the best route for, to walk with him. And just to give him a bit of a, even more of a feel for an outdoor life, which he has quite a lot of. But anyway, Ride With GPS is a really good site for doing route planning. Um, so you can choose, I used to use um, Garmin Connect, but uh, it's queuing features stopped working. It's, it's the queues that you could add in there, your own, um, cues on top of the left right and all that sort of stuff that you get with what's called a tcx file um yeah how how that works just didn't work for me so i went for to ride with gps and since that i've and i pay for it um and they've improved it quite a lot but actually i would say don't pay for it because if you pay for it you get a few features um in terms of the planning a few extra features but not a lot extra um uh, yeah, so very, very things that aren't of that. I've, I don't think I use really, so I'm probably going to stop paying for it. Um, but what it does do, Ride with GPS, is good for if you've got it on your bike in that, and you're using Ride with GPS for your navigation. Um, then it is, I think, it is worth paying the subscription. Um, it's got all sorts of great mapping, and one of the best is OpenStreet. Um, yeah, OpenStreet mapping, but the outdoor version, OSM outdoor um, which is really good particularly in the UK and, I'm at, and there's some other mapping which is state US specific but uh, best app that I've tried including Strava yeah it's, it's by far the best one I think um, they've got some new features coming in as well the free version is really good and look at Strava now you've got to pay for Strava if you want to do any route planning with Strava you've got to pay for it if you want to have leaderboards or anything so Strava they've been very clever they've attracted everyone with the free features and now they've just said nah you're getting nothing um so move to ride with gps which is really good yeah so it took me about an hour to plan it all but you for these sort of trips you've got to put in that extra effort um so use street view so ride with gps you can look at street view as well in there um so i look at satellite imagery as well street view um yeah, and then once I've done, finished, I export it as a GPX. Sorry, I export it as a KML file, and then I open it up in um, Google Earth, and then I can look at the contours and, tra and uh, terrain, and you get a bit better satellite imagery view. They let you zoom in a little bit closer. Where did this lot come from? Yeah, I knew they had them in in around this area. No, they're normally right in there. Beautiful. Oh, and the little ones. That's a gnarly bit. I've been racing down that gravel before. The sun's been in the wrong place, so he then goes into single track, but it's really dark and it's covered over. The sun's not lighting it up and it's just straight into hundreds of baby heads at 20 miles an hour. Staple Hill. It's just up and up and up. And it's uh, quite a bit gnarly. This is a bit I wouldn't do on a on a gravel bike. Um, you know, you really do need low pressure and and some big, biggish tires and the 2.1 inch, so they're not that big, but
I cannot just race through this place without stopping for, for my lunch, which I'm well overdue for and a coffee. So, I mean, last time I cooked up some pasta and so on and cooked up the coffee. There's a little bit of paraphernalia that goes with that and bringing the kit, but it just makes it, it makes it a little bit different if you do that. But to be honest, a little one cup flask and some sandwiches and <laughs> some crisps does me just fine. It's a beautiful area and I never knew this existed. I've lived here for, lived here. Is that a scratch? Oh dear. Lived here for years and I've never explored this section. So I've always been over the other section that I've, that I've done, but this actually is just far more interesting and, and there are far fewer people. Um, so there's a path that goes through it. Um, but the landscape and the trees and the uh, you know, loads more places for kids to run around and explore. I mean, into there, it'd be fantastic. You know, great place to lose kids. So on what, what you can do on Rider GPS is add in your into your cue sheet um, little hints and tips. So I delete the normal cue sheet because I'm more than happy just following a line. And then I add in all the things like um, climbs, uh, water stops, you know, all those things that are important to me. And so one of them, I always put a, a right-hand turn at an option. Um, so I know that I'm here now, and so. My normal route takes me down there, but I've got a right-hand turn that's indicating I could take that option. Um, I know, I, but I know from the planning that's a little bit more gnarly. And I've, I made a little comment about it. It's just a, a rough track. Uh, it's about half a mile longer. Um, but I'm a bit behind time, so I'm going to head straight down now. Yeah, this is not this is not for gravel bikes. But um, with this front sus, I so I just a button and all of a sudden I get the uh, the lockout that's taken got rid of and uh, and all of a sudden it just smooth you can feel it's bumpy and then it just press the button and pff, smooth beautiful um, I do like having a bit of front suspension um, yeah this would just be an unpleasant descent quite fast steep uh, descent uh, on a gravel bike yeah, so I've, I've, over the last few years now, I've changed quite significantly the sort of riding that I do. Um, so I started off doing, um, doing the fitness riding. And so I used to go off riding with my mate. Um, and just for fitness, got into Strava, good or bad. <laughs> Strava kept me, um, kept me, almost forcing me out to get out and do some do some exercise and get on the bike um, which actually did, did me a favor it got me in the habit of riding my bike then I got into sportifs started realizing that sportifs after a couple of years and I did all the local ones realizing that actually I'll just throw money down the drain I wouldn't say that if you're new to it I wouldn't say you're throwing money down the drain I think it's a brilliant idea uh, and they're good if you even if you've been riding for quite a while uh, they're good for social just to go out uh, and riding with a few mates uh, I've done that a couple of times but um overall it's 40 quid 40 quid for the last one i did was 40 pounds for a really bad route um without a lot of thought um hill right at the start everyone was spread out no one's really riding together so the social aspect has just has just gone away the food was stale sandwiches uh at one of the stops there wasn't any water it was just sports drinks which is right near the start so actually what i wanted to was water um yeah so 40 quid, you know, I can choose my own route, I can go when I like, I can go with who I like, I can stop where I like for food, 40 quid I can have a fantastic meal, um, <laughs> and I can get home, you know, I really don't need to be doing, um, to be doing all that. Then I got into the endurance side of riding, um, Ordaxes, I realised that I'm actually not 
no, not great. I sort of suffer in terms of electrolytes, um, and I've really got to pay attention. I tell you what, cycling long distance taught me a hell of a lot about riding and about nutrition and water and uh, and salts and the importance of all those things. And and uh, there we go. Um, so yeah, I was doing 200k, and I'll get up at three o'clock in the morning and do it. And I was really into it, absolutely loving it. Um, and I'm sure that I'm going to get back into that side of things but it takes so much of your time at the weekend i've got two days you know losing a whole day down to down to riding which is uh, what i'm doing at the moment um just wasn't really very good i'd lose my entire day um so i'm sure when i retire that i'll get back into that um but i also got a bit fed up of winter on a road it's six o'clock in the morning morning there's loads of traffic um or rush hour pouring rain <laughs> what am i doing uh, anyway so i started shifting away from miles into smiles and time on the bike um, so i've started doing the whole bike packing uh, again wanting to mix the longer distances with taking some gear and going somewhere because i found since we've had this um this virus thing going around that actually what I like about cycling is going somewhere, is having a purpose for going somewhere. Just getting on my bike and going for a cycle, I'm, I can't do it. I'm just not doing it at the moment because I can't really go anywhere. I can't go anywhere to camp or wild camp or, or go to a cafe or have, you know, have a goal in there somewhere, um, which I've now only now really realised. Um, and the bike packing went from the road and it's veered a bit more towards the gravel, exploring nature while camping bushcraft i don't know I'll, i'm gonna have a go at it <laughs> i'm gonna have a go at that but um a bit more of the off-road stuff so but gravel bikes are perfect because i can get somewhere on a gravel bike mountain bikes the ideal but you can't it's harder to get to get to places so this is the sort of thing i enjoy now just get on my bike and go and, and exploring um new places um so i found some amazing woods now which i've already told my wife um message to her to say i've got some great walks for us all right i really am behind the curve i told my mum i'd be there in half an hour and i'm a good 45 minutes away she's already waited two and a half hours but like i say she's not going anywhere so it doesn't really matter uh, a little bit rude still but um there we go so i think evolving your bike riding is a really good idea so even if you enjoy riding road bike if you can fit some wider tires on or go out on your mountain bike or go and do some other things, just explore it um, and you will have more tools at your disposal. When you come to want to go for a bike ride, you can just choose. Do I want to go for a long distance ride? Do I want to go and explore in the woods? Do I want to do some gravel? Do I want to bike pack? Do I want to just go out and smash out two hours of hard work? And you've got all sorts of options. So evolve your cycling is my message for the video. Anyway, a gnarly downhill now, so I'm gonna have to put the camera away. See my mum. Next little wood, which is quite dense. It's funny when I go out and plan these rides. I plan a, like I say, I always try and go to a destination or something like that. Um, so I plan my route out and back with loads of detail out and back. Yeah, as soon as I've been to the place I'm wanting to go, I always take the shortest route home. <laughs> It turned out that this plan is actually quite a good plan. If it's if it's going to be really hot, there's another wood. I don't know how many I've been in there. I've been in loads. 
Yeah, if it turns out it's going to get hot, then a really good idea is just get your mountain bike or a bit of gravel bike and get out and explore. I mean, with, oh dear. So this is a national footpath. Come through here. And the farmer has just really doesn't like the general public, does he? Couldn't even just leave the barbed wire off that. We'll cut this. What a knob. We want information. 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 Who are you? The new number two. Who is number one? You are number six. I am not a number. I am a free man. 